The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tyco Technicians. Hour. My pleasure to be here Monday through Friday and uh, 11 o'clock till noon, 877-927-6648. Love to hear from you. Dow is down 28 to 70,949, below that 18,000 number again. S&P is down 44 cents at 12, 12, oh, 2087. The Comp Index is down 15 at 4,800. The VIX is at 14.23, up only 14 cents, but uh, we're watching that VIX really closely. We had a Chapman Wave uh, trim gauge flashing yesterday, which suggested that within two days, you see the uh, futures sharply up. Usually it's sharply 9 to 11 points uh, overnight. That's exactly what we saw from the low yesterday, and that impacts the uh, S&P futures goes to the S&P cash positively. We've seen that. Now we're sort of pulling back. This is kind of normalization here as the market waits for the Fed tomorrow. But there's Apple. There are a lot of things coming out. Very important two-day session. Make it real simple. Let's just continue with our um, analysis. And as we do that, we'll look at parameters. We've got the QQQ series down 45 at 108.53. Those NASDAQ, the high flyers in the NASDAQ, <clears throat> They're in trouble. They're just having a real tough time. He has a gap down, an island reversal, and we'll see if we can, uh, if at 108.54 down 44 cents, <clears throat> the triple Qs, that's the NASDAQ 100 um, power shares. We'll see if they're able to uh, uh, move towards the 109.62 nine period moving average or the 107.89 simple moving average. 200-period uh, moving average in the short term. Um, the weekly charts in all cases are fantastic. This is a very necessary pullback. You know, you've had, let me just go through this one more time. Let me show you. The S&P has gone only to a leg B. And in fact, um, this A from 1810 up to the high of 211 uh, last week is the most spectacular 16, 17% gain. And it's done with this tiny little peak A over there, um, a point and a quarter to make a peak. So this is, you by any means, by any expression, by any um, technical analysis, you would be looking at this and saying, MACD and Stochastic are really strong. Nine period moving average is way down at 2050. You're trading at 287 right now, up seven cents. By any measure, you should see no new high this week above 211.05, and some kind of a consolidation will be taking place. If, in fact, there's a power move that takes you to 211.15s and it holds there, something else is going on, and we could see a spectacular move straight through the old highs of 2134 in the S&P, 18,351 in the Dow. But just let's treat this as a normalized move um, with a, with an extension in a, almost a single leg A. If you look at the futures, if you look at the uh, ESM 16, that is one single move to the upside because it trades almost 24 hours a day. And even on the weekend, it'll trade on Sunday night. So that extended the move. So that you've really got a single leg from 17.94 to the high that was made last week of 21.05.25. 17.3% spectacular move. You would normally expect some kind of a pullback. It doesn't have to be deep. Um, you would expect that there's a digestive phase coming up. All right. Now let's do this. We want to look at um, the IWM. I think it's, it's appropriate to do that now because we've got the Fed coming in uh, tomorrow at, at 2 o'clock. I'm not sure they can say very much. Meantime, back at the ranch, what you've got is a peak C1, peak C2, and even a peak C3 in the IWM so that we've not broken the high that was made on the 20th of April of 114.21. You did go to 114.19 on the 22nd, and today you went to 114.21. 
So that's the level to break. If it does go slightly higher, you can call that, um, so far it's a peak C1, C2, and even a C3. That would be a leg D. Very often you get those leg Ds after the C1, C2 in the Chapman wave. Leg B in the uh, weekly chart, not powerful, powerful. 94% in the stochastic. MACD is good. I, I, I have to tell you, when I look at these weekly charts, I know weekly charts can break down when the daily is smashed to the downside. But so far, the technicals look fabulous. Monthly chart is good, but not great. Not as good as the Dow or the um, S&P. Uh, so now I want to know one, I wanted to do one thing. Yes, New York Stock Exchange, and then we want to go to um, all these different um, NYA.X. So that's a peak E in the New York Stock Exchange from last week on the 20th. It went to 15,572. We haven't broken it yet. And this is a leg D. It's way more mature in the weekly chart than the others. It's gone to a leg D. Could be a peak D this week. And that's another reason why we are short in my opening call. We're short the Dow, a couple of different positions. We actually have long positions. We went back to shorting a particular uh, sector that we had been short for a long time, waited. I actually said we wanted down. I'm not shorting a rally. I'm shorting weakness. Very unusual for me to do that. I don't know if it's going to work. It's working right now, but hey, the day's young. So we'll see what happens there. And actually, we went long in a, a two kind of sort of, I'll treat them as sectors now. And they seem to be holding quite nicely. And that's what I think we're looking at here. We're looking at a rotational correction that's unfolding. Within the context of the rotational correction, what we're really looking at is that there are some stocks and some sectors that are actually holding very well. Now, holding very well and rallying, two different things. We'll only know by tomorrow afternoon after the Fed speaks. Now, let's go to this. I wanted to look at gold. Gold right now is trading up. 260 at 1242. It went right to the chap wave inside track support level. That's the propellant zone. Hasn't it did propel before to a peak D. We'll see what's happening after this. If the doll and, and the weekly chart just says, hey, I'm I'm in a rectangle formation. I'm in a digestive stage. Um, I've got a lot of support at the low that was made a few weeks ago at 1207.90. Break that. And you can see gold going down under 1,200. But meantime, back at the range, the monthly is improved. The weekly is looking fabulous with a high-level consolidation. That's all it is right now. And the daily says, hey, uh, I'm real close to breaking down. This is a very important moment. And let's just look at silver, SI. Silver's made a peak D. It's pulled back sharply from that 17-point 17.72 high of the 21st, it's trading at 17.02, but still a high level consolidation in the weekly chart. Um, we'll see what happens. You would expect also that gold would and silver would digest after such huge gains. Look at the dollar. The dollar is trading. <clears throat> it's not really doing very much. It's down 41 cents at 94.43. So the dollar is telling us that there's internal weakness for the dollar. It should be trading in 95. It's trading at 94.44. So that's a sign that it's just making these H patterns, lowercase m, in fact. Nothing there yet. And let me just look at crude oil, CL. Crude oil is trading up 88 cents at 43.51. Not really helping the market that much. I think it's going to leg C quite soon, about 44.49. And we'll talk about the TLT in a moment. The TLT is down sharply, down 53 cents at 127.3. Basil Chap will be right back. If you're looking to discover a new financial resource and diversify your financial portfolio, don't miss out on the Market Safe Commodity Solutions CD from EverBank. This is the second running of their popular five-year U.S. dollar-denominated CD, which gives you exposure to eight equally weighted commodities, including WTI crude oil, gold, silver, copper, nickel, soybeans, corn, and sugar. With annual pricing caps of 70% per component, you can earn up to 70% upside payment at maturity if the commodities increase in value across annual pricing dates. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There's no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this indexed CD. 
Don't miss out. Take advantage of this financial resource designed to grow with the times. The May 19th funding deadline is quickly approaching. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member. FDIC. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. I, I forgot completely to show the 10-minute chart. A little, it's kind of looks kind of wild, but actually, if you look at it, it's just got the arch formation, goes to a cup formation, back to an arch formation. Whoops, let me move this over now. Sometimes the arch gets stretched right, right. Where's the bottom? Uh, <laughs> okay, there it is. So we are looking at the pattern that says uh, double top at 2,091. And it's starting to pull back very sharply. And you've got the 2,084, 200 period exponential moving average now as a key support and a key resistance area. Just keep your, keep your eye focused on that. Um, what do I think? Um, it's very interesting. What I'm thinking is, oh, I didn't mean to do that. What I'm thinking is that within the context of the market itself, we are due for some kind of a rotational correction, number one. Why do I say rotational correction? Because I'm just about to sneeze. Watch out there. Here we go. Nope, 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 nope. Press the nose right there. That'll save it. But what do I mean by rotational correction? I mean that there are areas that I'm looking at that seem to have held very well. The financials, not all, but some of the financials are holding well. You've got certain sectors that are uh, managing to do okay. You had the IBB acting very nicely. Now it's starting to pull back, made that peak D in the daily, uh, starting to pull back. You've got the XLV. Let me just check the XLV. Whoops, I didn't need to do it over there. It's over here. XLV, which is the healthcare. A sector, the S&P Select Healthcare, made a peak E sharp move down today, almost shorted it. But I thought, you know, I've got, we've got, we've got plenty of shorts. We've got, <laughs> I don't have to overdo it. We've got longs, we've got shorts. I'm very comfortable with that right now. And uh, fairly tight stops, funnily enough. Um, I'm just, I, I, I feel that you've got a chance to get in. If the market turns down sharply, you know, even if by tomorrow, the, the, instead of being up uh, 80 points, the Dow is down 130 points, Thursday, you have time to get in because it's telling you about direction. 
So that's what we need. I said on Sunday to my subscribers, 160 points either way, closing price of 160 points up from 18,000 says we're probably going to go test the all-time high. A close below that, 160 points closed below that, that's even if it's cumulative, uh, says we'll be heading down. It just I'm trying to make it as simple as possible. And the VIX index is still not a big deal. It's at 1410, underneath uh, 1520, uh, $15, 15 20 Below that says there's buying pressure. Above that says it's starting to get selling pressure. So where was I? I was looking at the TLT. But before I do that, real good, two things. One is I got a, a, a fabulous uh, email from one of our, uh, our tigers. Real estate insanity in Brooklyn, 500000 for what's effectively a doghouse. I didn't have a chance to actually see it, but I can believe it because I'm I've looked at my, my wife is the expert in real estate in Brooklyn. She's been studying it for a long, long time, maybe 10 years. Um, and I, I, I know it because we, we, whenever we're there, we, we try to stop in to go to an open house just to look around, see what's going on. And I have to tell you, the prices are it's unbelievable. And Boston is getting like that, but that's nothing to, to some of the other major cities. So... 500,000 for effectively his doghouse, and I believe it probably is the doghouse. Uh, that's number one. Number two is real good, good uh, um, question here by Julie um, RBM16. RBM16. Look at this. Leg C. Remember why I said, I think that uh, whatever this is, New York Harbor blend uh, stock is, is a form of oil. That, that's where it comes in. Uh, so I, it looks good, and I said it should go higher. It's made a peak B. Now it's in a leg C. Once you get to leg C in the Chapman Wave methodology, if the technicals are good, 86% of the stochastic MACDs rallying. You should go to a D, and then we need to be careful. The weekly chart is still in leg C looking very good. So, yes, so in answer to your question, I think it's still looking, looking good. And uh, what is major resistance? Major resistance is in the... 1.6 area, it's at 1.5707. So right here, this candle, the candle of the week of the 12th, of the 4th of December, with a high of 1.628 and a low of 1.538, that entire candle, upside down Chapman Wave Roman candle, says that if you go into the wick at about 1.60, you should actually test the high. I, I think that's pushing a little bit, but I think that whole 1.6 area, is that would be my target in the short term. Okay, now let's go to the TLT. Um, uh, if you look at the pattern that, that I uh, often discuss, it's called the Eiffel Tower, where a market goes straight up and then it comes straight down. And if you look at the time price match, let me just do this in, in a larger context. Let's open this up here, right? If you look at it in the larger context, you had a move that went from 118 back in, January, in January, and all the way to 135.25 at a peak F. It pulls back. This is the 20-year uh, iShare uh, Treasury bond ETF, and it makes a, a cup formation, but the cup formation stops after 127.21, eight points down. It rallies, and then it stops at a very quick peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, peak E, peak F, and even a G. This is one of the quickest and shortest that we've seen, maybe in, in time and price, going to a G. And it goes from a low of the 11th of March to a high of, so that's 127, to 132.99, the 7th of April. And now it's come down. And in this pattern, the inverted V pattern, look at this. If I draw left side, right side, time price move to the plumb line, which is the fulcrum right there at the high, we've undercut it today, I believe. Make that red or pink, and that's to the right. We undercut it by many days um, today. We went to 127.14, so we're seven cents below it. That says that it better find support right now and get back to 127.21 as a closing price because if it closes below that, it only has tomorrow in which to close above 127. 21. If it doesn't do that, 125.79 is a 200 period exponential moving average target line for the TLT. What about the TBT? And we almost went along the other day and then it just sort of went, it slipped off my mind, to tell you the truth. 93.93, so this is leg B. 
This is a very big move, but it hasn't broken the previous high, whereas the TLT broke the low. So 38.85 is the high to break, the high of the 11th in the TBT. It's trading at 38.55 right now. What did I just say it was? 38.85. So it's got 30 cents to go. And that would also start leg C in the weekly chart. So a lot's going on. We'll see what the Fed does tomorrow. Um, what if the Fed hints that things are looking quite good? Well, then I think that we might see the market start to pull back. Let's go to Rich in Happy Valley, Oregon. Rich, how are you? Great, Basil. Thanks for taking my call. It's my pleasure. Yeah, those dog houses in New York, well, they're starting, starting to have some dog houses here, even in Oregon. Really? Yes, it's called Silicon Forest up in the Portland Oh, of course. Metro yeah, that, that's yeah. right. So, so, so this is... The, is that to do with a uh, uh, Microsoft and? Uh... Well, we have Intel here. You have Intel, okay. So that's very important to know because uh, it's happening. You could imagine the prices. I I'm hearing from someone who's moving from Newton to the uh, uh, um, Palo uh, uh, Palo Alto area, in uh, um, in uh, and and he said prices here are exorbitant. They are three times higher in Palo Alto. Can you yeah. believe that? Okay, you want to look at PYPL. I'll do some work on it. I've already done some. We'll add to that. Can you hold on? And we'll do it when we get yeah, back. Yeah, hold. Thank you. I'll be back with Rich in Happy Valley, Oregon, straight off this. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report. And make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. T TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS as proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 
Hi, folks. We're back. Dow's down minus six. S&P's up two. We've got uh, PayPal that we're looking at. PYPL for Rich and Happy Valley, Oregon. And there are a couple of things going on here because PayPal opened at round number 32 as an IPO back in 2015, screamed up to 42.55, and then plummeted down to round number 30 and is trading right now after a peak A and then a peak B. Uh, well, it's a leg B in the monthly. It's pulled back from the recent high of 41.75 and it's trading at 39.53. That's the monthly. The, the weekly chart has made a peak D and held the 200 period moving average and is attempting to form some kind of a base between, I would say, between 39 and 37 and a half. And the daily says that it's making a potential right shoulder failure pattern, which means it might try. It looked quite good yesterday, but today's action says, gee, it might try to test the 3850 level. Now I'm going to ask a question, Rich. Are, do, you, do you look at this technically, or is there a fundamental reason that you're really looking at it? I was looking at it technically, but fundamentally, the story sounds great because it seems like everybody pays with PayPal. It's but an alternative, some right. Some of the right. technicals didn't look so hot for me for the last two days. So this is, you know, if there is a fundamental reason for holding this, and I, I, I must say that on a monthly basis, it does look over a period of three to seven or eight months that it should go towards the 42 and then 44 level and that there's a good chance that the 36s will hold. I would say on a purely technical level, the bias at this particular point with the month almost closed. Oh, uh, someone said uh, PayPal reports tomorrow after the close. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. So, so, it's, so it's touch and go here. But, but Rich, I think you usually look at things in a – you have a – you have a more intermediate-term perspective, isn't that right? Well, yeah, five minutes or less. Oh, okay, <laughs> if it's five minutes or less. Okay, because if you're looking at this... I'm ready to pull this... the trigger either way. Okay, if that's the case, then I'm going to make two, two recommendations. One is, if it wasn't the case, and you said to me, I'm actually looking out at PayPal because I know some of the, the fundamentals which seem to concur that it's making higher highs and higher lows, even though it's kind of slow over overall. It's been from last October, and but it's still doing that. Then I'd be in the camp that says, you know what, regardless of what the earnings are tomorrow, um, you can have two ways of doing this. One is you could put in a, a bid at 38.50 and just say, hey, you know, you hit 38.50, I'll give it one point as a, uh, uh, I'll give it one point as a stop. Because if it starts to break the 37.50 level or even 37, uh, you're looking at something completely different. But if it manages to have an upset because of some earnings thing, but immediately it looks attractive and starts to move higher, then the weekly chart is really going to be improving a lot. I want the stochastic to be at 80% rather than 76%. And it will do that if it makes a new recovery high above 40.84. So here's my thinking. If, you, if you're a short-term trader, I don't really see why you want to take a one-and-a-half point. It might be more. A one-and-a-half point risk of it coming back down. Well, you, it could turn out to be in this kind of volatility of the market, especially with the Fed and all tomorrow. Um, I'm inclined to say to you, for maybe a two-point risk to the downside and maybe a two-point surprise to the upside, I would just step aside, and here's my thinking. If there's a good, re a, a good result, and regardless of what the market does, if uh, PayPal, PYPL, trading at 39.54, down 28 cents right now, if it has a good response and it goes above 41, you know now that you can go all the way to the next earnings report, and technically there should be a, a, a positive bias to the stock. So that any pullback after that, you've got yourself a really nice trade. Why? Because it should start to make a leg C above 41, what did I say it was, 41.75, if it's a positive result. If it's a negative result, then I, I don't think I would do anything with it. I'd much rather give it a, a three to five sessions to see how it holds support and then look at it. So 
if you had said to me, I'm, I've done my homework, I like it very much, I do, I'm just looking for an entry point, then I would say to you, you know what, regardless of what the fair, of the earnings, I would nibble right here at 39.55. I'd have a, oh, I'd even give it a one and a half point stop um, just to give it some kind of flexibility. And then we will discuss whether to add on Friday or Monday of next week, whether to add to it. And if it actually gaps up and, you, and you're in it, then you'd wait for a pullback to start to add. But because you don't have a bias like that, you're really looking at it as you're almost looking at it as, as a trade between now and the uh, and the earnings report, right? Will, yeah. will it will it pop to the upside? And I would suggest to you, I would have a forty, I'd have one or two forty calls, and that's all. And that would cost you maybe two hundred and fifty bucks, and I and that's it. And I say, you know what? There's 250 out the window, and if it works, it could be a real nice double or more. And but I would not do it any other way because I don't see in this market right now. There's so many other attractive stocks that if they pull back, I think they're going to look very enticing. I don't think you. I I don't want to two point gamble right now, either up or down. So I'm going to say to you. My bias is to look at this and say, I think there might be an upside surprise, but that is just a guess. Not only that, it's a guess. And then the market might respond in a completely different way. So I'm just going to say to you, if you're asking my advice, wait until Thursday, and then you're going to have yourself a, a potential trade in uh, pay PayPal. And I'm just at this point, um, I'm done with my days of guessing for um for the for the uh, earnings reports because I found especially over the last six months there are so many surprises where I looked at the stock and it looked terrible and then the earnings came out and they gapped up seven eight nine points in some cases I I don't need that risk and I'm just saying to you I I can't give you advice right now than to say I can guess that there could be a pop to the upside but what's the point of that I I don't think it's worth taking it. A 10% risk, even if it's a small amount. Let's let's hold off a little bit, and I let's look at it again maybe Thursday. Okay. And the other uh, thing that's in the back of my mind is Apple's reporting today, and that can affect the whole market. It really can. Now, this is a really good example of what I'm talking about. Everything about what Apple has been putting out and saying, and the price of the stock at 104.50, my eye says. If there wasn't an Apple report, I would not be surprised if Apple tests the gap and goes to the high of the 14th, which is 101.78, as three points down within the next couple of days. We've seen that Apple can sometimes give really big surprises. Even last time, I think there was an expectation that Apple would disappoint. And if I remember correctly, Apple gapped up. I might not have held the gap, but it did gap up overnight. So here's another thing that... Um, if I was to guess, actually, if I was to play this, it would be through the Nadex, and I'd probably buy uh, the upside for 105, like an upside call, and then a downside put. And if there's a move of four or five points, I make money. <laughs> but I, I, other than that, I really, all I can say is I think it should be down, but we won't know until it comes out. Okay, I, wasn't much, I wasn't much help. I'm sorry, Rich. <laughs> Let's stick to things again, maybe Thursday, Friday. Okay, Thanks, I appreciate Paula. it. Sorry. Good. Thank you very much. Folks, we're, we're, we'll be back in a moment. Dow's down 21. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. 
Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date action trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, 6 videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under trading newsletters. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE -E or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. And a quick question I had about BP Bridge for turning up. It's gapping up and the XLE is moving higher. I'll look at those in a moment. And uh, Kevin asks, what's holding up the Qs? The IBBs uh, drop sharply. Um, it's this rotational aspect. There are just enough uh, stocks within these different sectors that uh, what you would expect doesn't always happen when you put the cumulative value onto something like the QQQs because um, there is uh, a, such a mix, uh, a mixed package. So, yes, uh, IBB has dropped very sharply. It, was, uh, it made a peak D. That's the biotechs. Um, and we're going to be watching all of this very closely. I think we've got another sector rotation coming up. Now, what I wanted to do is also say that I've got someone holding here. Last night, I thought of this person, and I'll explain it all in a moment. Brenton Martinez, how are you? Hey, Basil, how are you? Well, I tell you what, I was thinking of you last night because uh, Ken Burns, who does some absolutely fabulous pro uh, uh, um, uh, documentaries, there was a documentary on the parks, the great parks of America, and he was talking about uh, Yosemite, I believe it was Yosemite, and, and then as he was talking, he was talking about this a guy called John Muir, and John Muir um, was from Martinez. Yes, he was. I have actually a quick story I can tell you. Okay, have, yes. Uh, the house that we live in was built in 1912, and this could be a complete urban myth, but there's... Supposedly, the person who lived in that house used to hike with John Muir, and the, we have a tree, I got a redwood tree that he uh, planted, supposedly. That's the story, anyway. I, I, just, I just got a cold chill down my, 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 my spine. That was fantastic. Isn't I that nice? Hiked, I hiked a trail that he, it's named after his daughter, and I hiked that trail oh, constantly. I've done it for the last 25 years, and... Uh, his house, it really isn't his house. They call it the John Muir house, but it's in Martinez. It's actually on the wife's side of the family. Okay. The, uh, the, the Strensels is the family name, and that's the, he was a doctor, and they had a lot of money. And, but, yeah, he lived in Martinez, and that's where he spent most of his time when he wasn't you know, walking the Yosemite. So and she, say, of, she said to him, go. You've got to go. It's your life's yeah. passion. Go and do it. It was fantastic. Exactly. And uh, if it wasn't for him, I mean, he was really the, the figurehead to create what became conservation land. It was, it's a fantastic story. And it's just one, it's amazing what one person can do 
um, with with a determination and foresight. And it was it was great. And then they said, my kids, I quickly got out my cell phone and I went to uh, uh, Google Maps and I looked and I said, oh, that is Martinez right there. In fact. <laughs> In fact, I, I think I flew when I was in San Francisco last, uh, about a year or so ago, maybe two years ago. Um, when we took off, I t it took a flight path going in and out that I've never done before. And it, it literally went right along all the, the river and lake and uh, whatever they call it. I'm sure I flew by this. Some The, the, the scenery was, I've never seen anything flying out of San Francisco like that. It was really, a spe I mean, this pilot must have been, uh, there must have been a special, someone who must have given him a tip off to say, hey, we've got some people that really go would like to take some pictures because it was absolutely fantastic. So, all right, let's get to our nitty gritties. You wanted to look at? The company is Ocean Rig, and I've been in and out of this stock. I bought that original bottom, and then I most recently got in at uh, 77 cents. And I, this is getting up to where I, you know, kind of my target area. But I just wanted your opinion. I, I want to try to hang on to it as long as I can here, and so, I'll just keep this stop. Yeah, let me just ask you a question here. This is um, O R I G trading at dollar 79, up 27 cents, up 17.83 percent. Is called Ocean Rig U D W. So this is. This has got nothing to do with rig. It's a similar. I think they do drill ships. It's. Uh, I think the UDW stands for Ultra Deep Water. Um, I'm not sure what the W. Is. Uh, maybe that's just part of deep water. But, uh, oh, okay. Look, I don't. I've never looked at this before. I didn't even know it existed. So O R I G original. It certainly is an original. And boy, <laughs> this chart is an original. It's in a leg E right now. But because it went so sharply and quickly away from peak D, it says that the pattern that I'm looking at on a worst case basis should give you a trading range. Let's just say it starts to turn down from tomorrow. It should give you a trading range between 145 and it could go a little higher. I'd say 178, you could go to 183, maybe 185. I'm not sure yet and looking at it that it could do it right away um, to break out into the twos, but definitely. so. You're in at the 77 level. No, you're in at what? Yes, I have uh, actually. I have 8,000 shares of it at 77 cents. Uh, um, folks, I'm gonna get. I don't want anybody to get upset about this. I don't want any uh, emails or. Uh, uh, <laughs> it happens to be two cents off the most recent low. I mean, if that isn't timing, that is timing. Fantastic. Um, so yeah. I think that you've got yourself a winner in two, two regards. One is at that 77 level. I think it's one of those situations where if you hold it for a long time and it starts to move, you'll, you say to yourself, I will never again get that price. Well, maybe one day you will, but not in this particular life cycle. On the other hand, if it suddenly turns down and it goes to a dollar ten, you say, "Oh man, I just gave away sixty cents in us." In the so that makes it very difficult. So here's what I'm going to recommend for psychological reasons. You can do whatever you want, but my my thinking is, try to keep at least quite a bit of of, of your original buy as a core position, and that core position says that at the point seventy seven. Quite a large part of your initial entry point is what you want to keep. But within that one third, it could be a little more than one third. It's these things are depending on how it trades. I would say that one third of it could have one part that says, I really for money management, I don't really want to lighten this nice big chunk that I've got, but for money management. I should on the move from I don't think that yesterday you expected that on the close of 149 uh, 152 that you would actually be looking at a dollar 84 today correct no <laughs> you might you might have wished it but it wasn't yeah. <laughs> even on your radar right first of all exactly. it had to cross the left side high of 167 there were a lot of things going on so I'm going to say and this is what I usually do this is something that I like to do I say, hey, that was absolutely a gift because I never expected it. So I would definitely take of something to reward yourself. And you can do two things. One is you can say, that's my money, 
and I'm not doing this is I'm gonna go I'm gonna do with something completely different with it. Or you can say, you know what? I love the way the stock is, act, is acting. It's gone to leg B already in the weekly chart. I'm going to dedicate at least part of that money to put back if it hits 146. That's the line period moving average. And then what have you done? You've given yourself a gift of 35 cents or something, right? So that's the way I would look at it. But one third, one, not one third, one part of it has to be under money management that says, if there is a close below the low of 132, that's the low of the 21st of April, we could have seen its best days for this cycle, and now you're going to have to wait for at least two, three weeks before it picks up another bout of strength. So I would do that. So you keep your core position. One part of it you can either take off now, but you could raise the stop so that you are going to take something off just a little bit, and then one part of it has to have some kind of a stop to protect. I love the fact that you're in it. I love the fact that it's done so well. There's nothing much I can say. Congratulations. Thank you, Basil. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Learn how to trade. Trade Options with Swim Lessons. Brought to you by TD Ameritrade. Think or swim. Next on TFNN. Hi, folks. Uh, final section. I got a, a bunch of calls. But first of all, Ocean Rig UDW is a Cyprus based offshore drilling contract that provides oil field services for oil and gas exploration, development, and production. So the company owns and operates approximately 13. Um, offshore ultra deep water drilling units. But I also just received uh, an, an email saying um, uh, ORIG is a spin off from Dry Ships, D R Y S. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. 
Okay. Well, well, we'll check on all that. And now, so here are a couple of things. Uh, Adam wanted to know about XLF. Let me just show you here. XLF trading at, this is the S&P Financials, up 14 cents at 23.65. I spent a lot of time this weekend and even today uh, uh, discussing how well the financials have done. We actually went long in particular financial. I'm not sure just exactly uh, how it's doing right now. So we went short today. We went a long couple of positions. We have a real mixed portfolio. Yep, we, we, we're long, it's looking quite good so far. Today is so young, it's, we can't even talk about it already. So yeah, in the financial sector, I think that this is the, the rotation is going to go in towards the, towards the financials right now. That's what's keeping up some of the support. We have a question about the XLE. The XLE is um, trading at A, B, C, it hasn't gone to D, it has to go, I'll just do this quickly for you. So there's the low bar, early April, and goes peak A in the Chapman wave, peak B in the Chapman wave, peak C in the Chapman wave. And what does it do? It has to go to 67.30 for leg D. Very close, but look at the weekly chart, how nicely it's building strength in leg C. Previous was a peak C minus failure. This looks like it could really work with 92%. In the, in the weekly, 91% in the daily stochastic. MACD is good, turning around nice uh, divergence, positive divergence in the uh, um, monthly chart. So S&P Select Energy Spider ETF looking good right now. And that's part of this rotation. After all, look, look at XOM, um, leg D in the daily, leg C in, in the weekly CVX, and that's what's helping the Dow. So in answer to Kevin's question, yeah, it's this whole rotational thing. I mean, as one sector gets hit, so the other sector comes on strong. Leg D in the CVX right at Chevron, right at the 200-period weekly moving average resistance. So I wanted to quickly explain that in the moments that we've got here. Now, I'm going to do my best to be able to do my show tomorrow. It might be a little difficult. Uh, there's just some, sometimes there's some scheduling complications. Um, I'm hoping that I'm able to. If I'm not, I'll be back the very next day. I'm fine. I just, uh, I just It's one of those things that happens. Um, so in the meantime, with the Fed, do you expect an arch once this is done? Um, uh, yeah, the monthly chart on XLE is, let me see, it wasn't looking that great before. Uh, it's okay. Uh, I, I, all I can say is that, yes, I believe the energy right now, the XLE is working, and we're going to have to see at 67.21, up 92 cents. How does it handle the resistance coming in between 68 and 72, that whole area? Hey. Three, three points, uh, two, three points, very nice. But let's see how it can handle that area. Um, the day is young. We've got the Fed. Fed could do a whole bunch of things, even by not saying anything. So all I can say is I'm going chart by chart, and that's the reason why I felt very strongly that I had to go with the long positions I wanted to put on Monday. I held off. I said, no, I'm going to do it Tuesday. And we got that's what stops off for. If we're taking out, we're taking out. Big deal. But let me tell you, if we survive the week with these particular longs that we've got, it could be a really good May. We'll have to deal with that. Let's see what happens. So, okay, we're going to wrap up. Uh, watch the VIX index, VIX.X, and tomorrow, as the Fed, if I'm not here, if I'm not able to do my show, if the Fed says whatever they say, watch the VIX index. If the VIX, if the market suddenly drops sharply and the VIX goes over 15 and holds into the close, that's going to be significant for a market pullback, uh, especially if it continues into Friday. If, in fact, um, it continues into Thursday, I'm sorry. And if, in fact, what happens if the VIX just plunges and goes to the 1350s or lower, it's just saying, hey, business as usual, the Fed's there to support the market. I hope everyone has a great, a great day. I'll be back a little later on with Tom O'Brien. And otherwise, I will see maybe tomorrow. I hope tomorrow. Otherwise, it'll be Thursday. Have a great day. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. 
Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This is TFNN.